It has been both a challenge and a delight to be in the book of Judges, hasn't it? My goodness, these stories of, of Israel forgetting who their God was, falling into sin, going into captivity. God raises up a great leader to deliver them. And everybody's shouting hallelujah until the next generation does the same thing. Hey, lest we get too uh, condescending toward God's ancient people, how many times have we had that mini cycle in our lives sometimes where we just kind of go about our business and suddenly we're finding little areas of compromise and little areas where we're not quite following God with full devotion. And then we find ourselves sort of enslaved to some of our feelings or habits that we didn't think we had. And pretty soon we start calling out to God and isn't it wonderful through Jesus Christ, our Lord, he is so gracious to come and heal and deliver. Well, the book of Ruth is the best story during the age of the judges. Now, it's important to have a little bit of historical context here because it was always God's intention to give Israel a king, but a king of the right kind at the right time. You read in Deuteronomy 16 and 18 that God has appointed leadership and appointed places for worship, but it was to be his appointment. And that's why the, the editor and writers of the book of Judges will say there was no king and everybody's doing what's right in their own eyes because they're writing it from the standpoint of King David, who is going to bring real restoration and spiritual renewal. Though David himself wasn't perfect, he's going to bring a tremendous blessing to the people of Israel. And so Ruth comes in the midst of this very difficult history. And it's this beautiful romance of redemption. Now, I've often said the Bible is every type of literature and every type of movie you could ever want. The Bible's a romantic comedy because it begins with two people in love in the garden. They go through a few problems and then we end with a beautiful wedding and a big city and a big party. Uh, the Bible is a supernatural thriller as we see good and evil and angels and demons and the cosmic conflict. And of course, we know the God who is the ultimate winner of that conflict, and he invites us to join him in that battle and in that victory. The Bible is also a profound book of wisdom. And so the Bible is just so, it's absolutely replete with everything that we need. And this book of Ruth sometimes gets reduced to kind of a Sunday school story. It's a profound theological work. It's a profound work of wisdom. It takes place during these various judges. And it takes place during this chaos, but it's a story of grace in the midst of it. And Ruth herself, as a hero of faith, is an unusual figure because she was a Moabite. And earlier in Deuteronomy 23, the Lord had told Moses and, and the next generation that no Ammonite and no Moabite could be a part of the people of God. Or they might be able to be marginally a, a servant somewhere, but they could never come into the sanctuary or be an equal part. And yet we see here grace triumphing over law, and we see mercy triumphing over judgment as Ruth makes the decision to say, I'm going to follow uh, to Naomi, I'm going to follow your God. I'm going to be with your people. And of course, this romance of redemption is also a backstory to the story of King David and ultimately Jesus Christ, because Ruth becomes part of the lineage of King David and part of the lineage of Jesus Christ as a result of her faithfulness to God, her faithfulness to Naomi, her faithfulness to the people of God. So let me just read a few uh, a few passages from the book of Ruth that will help give us a context for our application. Ruth said, as she and her sister had lost their husbands and Naomi was urging them to go ahead and go back to their people, Ruth said, do not urge me to leave you or return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Wow, what commitment. That was a commitment with, with not a lot of guarantees at the other end. Later on, as she meets Boaz and that this redemption story continues, Boaz answered her, All that you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother, came to a people you did not know before. The Lord repay you for what you have done, and a full reward be given you by the Lord, under whose wing you have come to take refuge. You know, many times we have difficult natural families. 
Many of us who are followers of Jesus Christ have come from dysfunctional histories and homes. Perhaps there's been serious trauma or abuse, or perhaps there's been brokenness and, and hurt and woundedness. The promise of Ruth and the promise of the Bible is, not only is God ready to receive us, but God's people are there to be called our people. The blood of Jesus Christ is even more powerful than human blood. And that's part of my testimony. Though, though my um, late mother and my father did ultimately know the Lord, and I will look forward to seeing them in heaven, there was much brokenness in my home. And yet, because of the body of Christ, I was embraced and taught what it, was, what it meant to be a healthy disciple and follower of Jesus. And so, when Ruth is making this choice, it's not only a sacrifice, but it's also God's embrace, and she understands God's grace. The scriptures go on, I am Ruth, your servant. Spread your wings over your servant, for you are a redeemer. And Boaz said, may you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. I will do for you all that you have asked. And of course, there was even a risk here because there was a closer redeemer that could have redeemed Ruth, but he refused. And she came under Boaz's protection as they married and expanded the family. Then all the people who were at the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. May the Lord make this woman like Rachel and Leah. By the way, take a look back in Genesis. Rachel and Leah didn't have an easy time of it, did they? And yet God blessed them in the midst of all the dysfunction and chaos of Jacob's family. God blessed them. And so God is blessing Ruth in the midst of this. She chose to follow the Lord and identify with Naomi and her people rather than return to Moab and returning to the pagan gods and returning to husbands, a husband that her family would choose for her. By the way, she and Naomi risked real starvation because they were leaving security and they weren't sure if they'd be welcomed back into the land of Israel. Boaz is also seen as a type of Christ. He's a kinsman redeemer. That means he's related to them by family, but he's redeeming them, and he's choosing to welcome an outsider and continue the lineage of Ruth's dead husband. Boaz is kind and just and merciful, principled in all that he does. A woman was super vulnerable in this ancient world. And even though the law of God made men and women equal, even though the law of God offered protection, the way the the vulnerable the vulnerability of women and the way they were treated was very challenging. So even as Ruth was gleaning in the fields, getting enough money, uh, getting enough food and resource to eat that night, um, Boaz made sure that she was protected which implies that there were a lot of women not so carefully protected in that ancient world. And so this is a moment of great kindness on the part of Boaz and great courage on the part of Ruth. You know, the other thing that's so wonderful here is God loves to welcome the outsider. All through the Old Testament and New Testament, non-Israelites or non-descendants of Abraham are welcomed by God when they show faith and courage and trust. From Rahab the harlot, when the walls of Jericho were going to come down, all the way through to a Syrian general named Naaman, who there was nothing particularly devout about him, but at a a critical moment, he listened to the prophet and put his trust in the prophet's word and the prophet's God and found himself cleansed from leprosy, an outsider. And the same goes in the New Testament, whether it's a centurion that says, oh, my, my, my servant is, is, is dying, my servant is sick. And then he says to Jesus, I don't deserve to have you come under my roof. And Jesus is astonished and says, I've not seen such faith in Israel. So we see that God's grace extends beyond the boundaries. Did you know that right now today, As we are enjoying this video and this time of discussion together, there are thousands of Muslims around the world having supernatural revelations of Jesus Christ, and many of them not exposed to any kind of preaching or missionary work. And then when the missionaries do come, they're ready to be the source of the new churches that are born, many of them underground. There are supernatural things going in in disparate parts of our world where God is revealing His grace and people are responding. And that's one of the reasons why mission is so important, because God loves the outsider, and once they say yes to Jesus Christ, they're no longer an outsider. 
By the way, if you feel a little bit like an outsider, if you feel like you don't quite fit anywhere, I've got good news. The book of Ruth is proof that you are in. You fit in the body of Christ. You know, that was my testimony in high school. Um, I was uh, pretty good at academics and decent at athletics, but I didn't fit in any group. And I walked into a spirit-filled church like High Point, and nobody cared what my GPA was or how many points I'd scored in a game or how tall I was or what group I hung out with at school. They were just glad that I was there looking for God and looking for what he had for my life. And I just want to return the favor. So I want you to know, even though even Christians can make mistakes in relationships and things, want you to know that you, if you believe in Christ, you're in, and there's a family for you to be part of, and you can now be family to others that the world calls outsiders. You know, we often feel like an outsider, don't we? Where, 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 is, where does that hit us sometimes? Maybe it's at school or in social settings, at work. Sometimes we can feel alone in a crowd. Even if we're the leader of something, we can feel a little bit distant. But the Lord is here to help us. And it would be really great to share with each other how the Lord's helped us to feel not like an outsider anymore, but as one accepted by him. It's also humbling to receive help from others. Ruth needed help. Naomi, they needed help. And so she had to submit herself to this whole process of being able to glean, of be, uh, to glean for food and being able to see if she could be redeemed by her relative. And I think it's good for us to share how God has used others to help us in critical moments of time. I think of a moment when I was a young man really wrestling with my identity and wrestling with how I felt about myself and one of my spiritual fathers took time for me. And he didn't take time to lecture me in 25 principles of something. He just spent time affirming me, praying for me, letting me know that God was faithful and that God was continuing to work in my life and that, he, that I was fearfully and wonderfully made and that God had good plans for me. We need to hear those things. Sometimes we need to hear them professionally if we have particular deeper needs. Other times we just need to hear them from friends. And by the way, even if you have that need, you can also meet the need of someone else by being a source of encouragement. Ruth and Boaz are both heroes in this story. Ruth's humility and Boaz's generosity are amazing. And I'd like to end this brief moment with a look at humility. You know, it's really interesting. Ruth was willing to humble herself, leave her idols behind, leave her people behind, and come into the embrace of the Lord God of Israel and the people of God. And she was coming into that as very much an outsider, even an enemy to some. Boaz showed humility as he followed process. I mean, he was a rich landowner. He could have just taken Ruth into his house and not regarded anything, but he followed the process and redeemed her fully and paid the full price, just as our Lord Jesus did as he died for our sins on the cross and rose the third day for our victory. You see, redemption is all about paying a price for liberation. And Boaz refused to circumvent or short-circuit that process. And instead, he paid the full price that he might redeem her completely, just as our Lord did that for us. Humility is something God honors in a particular way. We read this in James chapter 4, 1 Peter chapter 5. We find out that if we humble ourselves, we receive the favor and grace of God, and we have victory in our spiritual battle. So the book of Ruth is a great romance. It's a great story of redemption. It's a great story of courage and loyalty. But it's also a great story of humility as we both receive and release God's love to one another.